hey guys and welcome back to my channel so today i have two treats for you i'm going to be talking about the movies black caesar and hell up in harlem which my girl miss kim aka the housewife well this housewife she requested all right i told her what i was doing to put this channel and she put her request in she said i want you to talk about these movies and you know i gotta come through for my girl so here we go so i'm gonna talk about black caesar and the sequel, Hell Up in Harlem. And of course, starring Fred Williamson. Because he was a handsome man back then. He had all the ladies swooning, okay? So, Black Caesar was released in the UK as Godfather of Harlem. Now, it is a 1973 American black exploitation crime drama film. Written, directed by Larry Cohen. And starring Fred Williamson, Gloria Hendry, and Julius Harris. It features a musical score by James Brown with the heavy input from his band leader, Fred Wesley. His first experience with writing music for a film. Now, the sequel to this was also released in 1973. Okay. Now, it was directed by American, in the American International Pictures. The release date was February 7th, 1973. I wasn't born yet, okay? I wasn't born yet. I was born in 74. This was made in 73. But when I got a little bit older to know what I was watching, that's when I saw this movie. The running time is 87 minutes. The country, United States, the English language, the box office, it came with $2 million in the U.S. and Canada rentals. All right, so here's the plot. Tommy Gibbs. Tommy Gibbs is played by Fred Williamson, is an African-American who grew up in Harlem, New York City. Now, as a kid, he was brutally assaulted by a cop named McKinney. The incident led to him to a life of crime. Now, as an adult, he joins the New York Mafia and becomes the head of black crime syndicate, syndicate in Harlem. He wages a gang war with the Italian mobsters of New York City and begins to establish a criminal empire, keeping a ledger book of all his dealings as leverage over his business associates, including McKinney. Now, he meets and falls in love with a singer named Helen, who is as Gloria Hendry, and marries her. She is unhappy as he is violent and, oh my God, I, yeah. And he takes advantage of her. You know what I mean. Sexually advantage of her. Eventually his enemies conspire with her. Leading to an attempt of his life. That leaves him shot and wounded. Killing his would be assassin. He returns to his office. To retrieve the ledger book. McKinney meets him there. And attempts to humiliate him. Before killing him. Tommy overpowers McKinney. And beats him to death. Retrieving the ledger, a badly wounded Tommy returns to the house where he grew up, but a street gang attacks, robs, and presumably kills him. Now, that's what happened. I don't want to give too much away, but this is a bad movie, and I mean in a good way. It's really good. See, a lot of black exploitation films are good, you know, and of course they still shown in a different light, but... It's, I mean, some of the movies are good, you know? Some people hate black exploitation movies, and I get it. You know, I get it. Now, here's the cast. We also, we know that Fred Williamson played as Tommy Gibbs, Omir Jeffrey as young Tommy Gibbs, Gloria Hendry as Helen Bradley, Art Lund as Captain Jack McKinney, DeErville Martin as Reverend Rufus, Julius Harris as Mr. Gibbs, Minnie Gentry as Mama Gibbs, Philip Rowe as Joe, The Brain Washington, Michael Jeffrey as Young Joe Washington, William Wellman Jr. as Alfred Coleman, James Dixon as Irish Bryant, Val Avery as Cardoza, Patrick McAll McAllister as Grossfield, Don Pedro Colley as Craw Daddy and Myrna Hansen as Virginia Coleman. And let me tell you something about these black exploitation films. 
some some of the names that these gangsters have, okay, if you listen to some of these, I'm going to say rap artists, a lot of rap artists took names from these movies because they know their parents used to watch this. Just like I'm going to give you an example from Let's Do It Again, Biggie Smalls. He was known as the notorious, you know, B.I.G., but when he came out, he came out as Biggie Smalls. Where did Biggie Smalls come from? Biggie Smalls came from um, um, Calvin Lockhart because Calvin Lockhart and Let's Do It Again was Biggie Smalls. Okay? So, yeah. A lot of these, you know, people who are out here famous now, they, they get these names from back in the day or for people in jail. So, as the production, now it says here that the film script was originally um, commissioned by Sammy Davis Jr. Now, according to Larry Cohen, Davis wanted to do a picture in which he was a star instead of being a flunky to Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin. So, I suggested that he do a gangster movie like Little Caesar since he was a little guy. And so was Jimmy Cagney. And so was Edward G. Robinson. And I thought he could play a little hoodlum working his way up in the Harlem underworld. So he ended up, he, um, Cohen wrote a treatment for $10,000. But when he finished, Davis could not pay due to some trouble with the IRS. Then Cohen was approached by Samuel Z. Arkoff of American International Pictures who were interested in doing an action film that could star a black actor. And Cohen, Cohen produced the treatment he had written for Davis, and AIP agreed to finance. So most of the film was shot in New York, although some interiors were filmed in, uh, in Los Angeles. And that's when Fred Williamson had was cast as the lead. And you know what? I couldn't see... Sammy Davis Jr. doing this anyway, even if people they would have called it Little Caesars, it's just not his character to me. I, I just couldn't see little Sammy Davis as a gangster. But Fred Williamson, now he has the attitude, he has the swag, you know, he has everything. And I really am glad that he was um Black Caesar. Okay. Now Hell up in Harlem. Let's talk about that. <sighs> now, the plot to this was, now it says here, having survived the assassination attempt at the end of Black Caesar, Tommy Gibb takes on corrupt New York District Attorney D'Angelo, who has sought to jail Gibbs and his father, Papa Gibbs in order to monopolize the illicit drug trade. Now, Gibbs decides to eliminate drug pushing from the streets of Harlem while continuing to carry out his illicit enterprises. Gibbs falls in love with Sister Jennifer, which is Margaret Avery, a woman who works with Reverend Rufus, a former pimp who has found a religious calling. Could you imagine? Now listen, I can't say people don't, can't change their lives around, but honey, you were for being a pimp to a man of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, <laughs> oh man. So Gibbs and his father have a falling out after Gibbs is told by his enforcer, Zach, that his father ordered the death of Gibbs' ex-wife, Helen. Gibbs and Jennifer moved to Los Angeles, leaving Papa Gibbs in charge of the Harlem territory. It is later revealed that Zach himself killed Harlem, I mean killed Helen as part of a move to take over the territory with the assistance of D'Angelo. Now Gibbs defeats defeats hitmen that was sent to him um while Papa dies of a heart attack while fighting with Zach. Now, knowing that D'Angelo would be having the New York airports and Rose watch, Gibbs flies into Philadelphia and then enters New York City on foot in order to carry out a personal war against Zach and D'Angelo. 
So Julius Harris plays Papa Gibbs. Okay, let me give you the cast. Of course, Fred Williamson is Tommy Gibbs. Julius Harris is Papa Gibbs. Gloria Hendry, we know, is Helen Bradley Washington. Margaret Avery as Sister Jennifer. De Erville Martin as Reverend Rufus. Tony King as Zach. Gerald Gordon as D'Angelo. Bobby Ransom as Joe Frankfurter. James Dick Dixon as Irish Bryant. Esther Sutherland as the cook and Charles McGuire as Charles, Mc, as Charles McGregor. Now, of course, this was also directed and written by Larry Cohen, produced by Samuel Z. Arkoff, Larry Cohen, James Dixon, Peter Savinston, and Janelle Webb. Cinematography, Fenton Hamilton, edited by Frank O'Guerry and Peter Harness. The music by Edwin Starr, and of course, it was distributed by American International Pictures. Now, this movie was released December 16th of 1974, I mean, 1973. The running time is 94 minutes. The country is United States and the English language. Now, the first one came out in February of 1973. This one came out in December. Just about what? 10 months? Right? It's But it, it mean, right at the end, like, not even a, like, let me see. It, not even a year. Not even a year. So, this came out December of 1973 and the other one came out in February. So, one came out earlier in that year. And then one came out later on that year. So I guess to me, after Black Caesar, I mean, yeah, after Black Caesar was made, they had to start on this movie, you know, quickly. And I'm gonna say both movies were good. I, I really do like both movies. I mean, if you into these type of movies, they're really good. Um, it's a lot of crime, it's a lot of, you know, um, just a lot of drugs and stuff that's going on. You get to see what Harlem looked like back in those times. It's a good movie. I, I enjoy both. So if you guys, you know, you know, if you guys like saw this movie, both of these movies actually, Black Caesar and Help in Harlem, because you have to watch you have to watch Black Caesar first and then watch Hell in Harlem so that it can continue on with the story. Um let me know. Let me know in the comment section if you saw this movie, if you remember this movie, because there are some people who remember none of this. And there are some people who don't even know nothing about this stuff. So I'm here to bring you some knowledge about these movies. Okay. Now, if you want me to review an old movie or a old TV show or old series, well, not really an old series, but you want to give me some recommendations, you can hit me up on Instagram at the real phone jones and just hit me up in my instant in my message and say listen can you review this movie i saw your movie on youtube could you remove review this movie and i when i get a chance i'll review it and come back on here and talk about it sorry i got all tongue-tied but yeah black caesar and helping harlem that was a good movie and you know me and kim which her name is This Housewife on Instagram. We know some of the, we know a lot of movies. We know a lot of old school movies and old school shows. So when she be throwing them at me, I be like, oh snap, what you know about that? You know, we around the same age. Cause I be like, oh, I forgot about that. But have you heard of this one? And it's like all day with us. So I'm glad that she, re she recommended me this movie to talk about and to also make sure that these movies don't get lost because you know, this is from 1973. Who's talking about movies from 1973? You know, who knows about movies from 1973? Even though it was before my time, but well, I came a year later. You know, I came a year later. And when I got old enough to know what I was watching, I watched it and I enjoyed it. I like a lot of black exploit movies. I do. I'm not even going front. I do like them because I feel like you learn a lot. 
you learn a lot from these black exploitation movies. And let me tell you one movie I learned a lot about is, uh, you know what? I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it because I'm going to review those two movies together. I'm going to save it. I'm going to tell y'all next time, okay? But, um, yeah, because mm -hmm. they, they teach you a lot. They teach you a lot. Yeah, it's about crime, you know, and drugs and all that kind of stuff most of the time. But let me tell you something. You have to watch it to really catch the meaning that is dropped, the gems that are dropped in these black exploitation movies because some of it will go over your head. Some of it will go directly over your head if you're not really listening and really watching. Okay, so that's all I have to say about this. Like I said, these are some great movies. These are on um, DVD. You can probably look look it up on streaming services and find them and watch them. You know, make sure you're looking at a good copy or a good stream. And just let me know if you decide to watch it. Hey, hey, phone, I like the movie or whatever the case may be. Let's have a conversation. All right, you guys. I'll talk to you later. And thanks for listening. Bye.